Ever heard of Shelby Church? Well, if you haven't, go to her channel right now. Hold on, not, not right now. Watch it, watch this video first and then go to her channel and check her out. She's been making YouTube content for over 10 years and has amassed 120 million plus views and 1.65 million subscribers. That's, that's, that's a lot. Of course, when you're getting hundreds of thousands of views per video, it's no surprise that Shelby's got a ton of brands who want to invest in her. What also makes Shelby valuable to brands is her channel's focus on both tech and lifestyle content, which is kind of hard to find surprisingly. And Shelby's making good money from the views on her YouTube channel. In fact, in 2019, she made over $140,000 alone. What most people don't realize is that brand partnerships can actually be more lucrative than AdSense earnings. Shelby has her brand deal game dialed in, so I'm gonna take a deep dive into three of her sponsorships to deconstruct why brands continue to work with her. And make sure to stick around to the end to learn how you can apply Shelby's brand deal skills to your own sponsorship strategy. First, I thought it'd be fun to rewind about five years to see how she executed partnerships back then. Shelby uploaded a review video called American Tries British Candy and plugged the audiobook app Audible pretty early. I'm in London right now. So of course I had to try the candy. I went to Tesco, which is like, I don't know what the equivalent would be in America. Maybe like a Walgreens. They had a bunch of candy. Also just wanted to give a quick thank you to audible.com for sponsoring this video. For some people hearing an ad at the start of a video can be a bit of a buzzkill, but Shelby knows how to keep her fans committed. It comes down to two things, time and personality. First and foremost, she lets her fans know that this brand plug is gonna be quick. Why is that important? Because nobody, and I mean nobody, wants to stick around for a long drawn out ad that feels like that one class you took in college that you had to or else you couldn't graduate, right? And you had literally had no choice but to sit through it. The other factor is personality. What Shelby does really well is maintaining a very casual and conversational tone when introducing the brand, even giving a playful jab to her fans if they haven't heard of Audible. An app where you can listen to audiobooks. They have pretty much every audiobook you could ever want. So a couple of things. Adding the logo of the brand is a smart way to visually hammer home the partnership and burn it into her followers' minds. Also, it looks like Audible's legal team required her to add an FTC disclosure on screen, including language like, all opinions are my own. I know that might seem like a little weird, but every brand's legal teams are different. And sometimes you just gotta roll with it. I actually have a few recommendations. I just want like a fun, easy kind of thing to listen to. I love reading comedians, like memoirs, I guess you call it. They basically just write about their life and it's pretty much always hilarious. Tina Fey has one, Amy Poehler has one, Mindy Kaling has one. This is where she zeroes in on her own credibility. She doesn't just spout off more boring stats about Audible's extensive library, which we all know is big. She gives her own personal recommendations for her viewers, including a specific audiobook that she just downloaded. And Amy Schumer just came out with one, so I'm about to listen to this. It's called Girl with a Lower Back Tattoo. And you guys can get a 30-day free trial in the link below. It's audible.com slash Shelby, so check it out if you want to try an audiobook. Call to action. She tells her fans exactly where they can download the app, and she even sweetens the deal by letting them know they can get a free 30-day trial. What more could you ask for at this point? What's impressive about this sponsorship is how effortlessly Shelby seemed to talk about Audible without it sounding scripted or overwhelming her audience. In a span of 40 seconds, she explained what Audible is, how it can be useful for her viewers, and the perk of a 30-day free trial when they sign up through her link. It feels less like an ad and more like a friend telling you about something cool that they started using. Sponsor number two. Now let's fast forward to one of Shelby's most recent videos, which is how much I pay to live in Los Angeles, my LA house tour, where she partnered up with Skillshare. By this point, I'm sure you guys have seen bits and pieces of where I live, but today I wanted to show you a full tour of where I live in LA. Okay, first off, Shelby's house is awesome. And that's exactly why this sponsorship is so compelling. Notice how she opens the video on her laptop, setting up the lights, literally creating content. And then we get this awesome slow-mo shots of her house. This isn't random. It's Shelby planting a seed in your head. But for what exactly? Before we get into the tour, I want to quickly thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. I've talked about Skillshare before, but if you're not familiar with it, it's an online learning community. They have thousands of different courses for a pretty low monthly rate. If you get the annual subscription, it's under $10 a month. They have courses on everything from video production, editing, business courses, cooking. I mean, there are really practical ones to sharpen your skills, and then there are fun ones to just learn something for fun. Without her fans even realizing it, 
it, she set them up for that Skillshare plug. By opening the video with those shots of her creating content, she was reminding them of what it takes to consistently make high quality content for them for free. So when she talks about Skillshare, people pay attention. What she also does well is remind her fans that this is a sponsorship she has a history with. She's talked about them before, right? Brand loyalty is, you know, kind of a big deal. She then talks about how Skillshare is not only affordable with low monthly prices, but can be helpful for anyone. In other words, she's leveling the playing field as if to say, hey, you don't need to be a big time YouTuber for this to benefit you, right? You can use Skillshare to learn almost any new skill you wanna pick up. I know a lot of people that watch my channel are interested in making their own YouTube channel, so the courses I would recommend are Ali Abdal's editing course and Sarah Dietschy's how to vlog course. I'm an experienced editor and I learned things. Now here's where she makes things personal. Again, it's important for her own creator brand and audience that she stands behind brands that she herself uses and benefits from on a human level. She immediately connects with her fans who want to learn how to edit videos like her and recommend specific courses to take. But what's most important is her acknowledging that even she learned some new tricks by using Skillshare despite being an experienced editor. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of a premium membership. So check it out down below if you're interested. You get a free month. Okay, now Shelby's just flexing at this point. She already hyped up the affordable cost, but now she's giving away a free month of a premium membership for the first 1,000 people to sign up. Not just any membership, premium, right? This is the filet mignon membership. Or if you're vegan, or you're vegetarian, maybe the, the kale Bonk. memberships? Kale? Kale? Arugula? <laughs> this video alone got 150,000 views. So let's do some quick math. Let's pretend that half of the 1,000 people who took advantage of that offer decide to become paying members of Skillshare. At about $100 a year times 500 people, that's $50,000. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, but what did they pay Shelby? Well, it's hard to know for sure, but now you can start to see how compelling it can be for brands to partner with a creator like her. For the next sponsor, this is where Shelby is really showing how savvy she is. The entire video is dedicated to the sponsor. Yes, the entire video, not 30 seconds, but an entire 10 minute video called, I tried the $2,000 Tempo Studio, is it worth it? It's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see if this strategy pays off for her. Like a lot of people these last few months, I have fully embraced home workouts. But I have found that sometimes I get a little stale and I do miss the gym. So when Tempo reached out wanting me to try their new home fitness studio, I had to give it a try. This is the newest home fitness tech product that I've seen. I've been trying it for the past couple weeks and today I'm gonna show you guys what it's like and how it compares to the mirror that I tried back in 2019. Let's get started. She doesn't beat around the bush here. The pandemic has turned everyone's life upside down. For Shelby's audience, who are presumably young and value fitness, she knows that home workouts have become a way of life for them, right? So dedicating an entire video to something that can help improve that experience is a win-win. Okay, I know what you're thinking. What exactly is this thing and how is it different from the mirror? So first let's take a look at the Tempo because it is very different than the fitness mirror and also very different than Peloton and a lot of the home studios out there. So here Shelby breaks down the key components of the brand. She's methodical and most importantly, how it differentiates from other brands like it. This is actually pretty unique because a lot of times brands don't want you to mention their competitors at all. But by emphasizing those differences, she's able to make this product stand out. Believe it or not, guys, weights are not cheap. I actually had no idea until the quarantine when they were all sold out just how much a barbell costs. A stainless steel barbell like this one could easily run you $300. I've even seen some for $500. So even though it is $500 more than the mirror, it definitely feels worth it if you're into lifting weights because that stuff is gonna cost you a around $500 anyway. What I actually found most impressive is how she tackled the price point of the product. That $2,000 price tag is pretty hefty, especially during a pandemic. So how do you make your audience feel like something like this is worth their investment besides the convenience of it? My cat is meowing. Sunrise, can you stop meowing, please? Sorry, my, my cat is meowing. Shelby points out how one can easily spend more money buying standard gym equipment separately versus Tempo Studio. Also, she does an excellent job of validating the Tempo Studio's higher cost relative to its competitors by emphasizing how much more you're getting. There are hundreds of classes on here and they get new ones all the time. So if you're not really feeling a workout, you can definitely find one that you do like. 
Now, for a large portion of the video, Shelby really goes the extra mile with giving a hands-on demo of how the Tempo Studio works. She does various exercises, she shows off the software, and breaks down all the cool little features that the product has. What's great about this is her fans can actually see the product in action and how easy it is to use. But it's the end of the video that really packs a punch. Okay, so this is my roommate, Lauren, and she has been doing one of the programs. Which one have you been doing? The six weeks. Sh <laughs> I haven't heard of that one. <laughs> I've been doing a six week shred. I think I'm on like day 10 or 11. <laughs> By bringing in her roommate to talk about the Tempo Studio, she adds another layer of what we call objective legitimacy to the brand. Shelby's roommate is not a YouTuber. She has nothing to gain from promoting this sponsor. Also, it's a slick way of letting everyone know that multiple people can use this product, even if they don't necessarily buy it. You know, kind of like a Netflix password. I mean, I'm not saying I share my password with anyone, but... Mom. Time for you to get your own account. All in all, after using both the Mirror and the Tempo Studio, I really think the Tempo Studio just has more to offer. The Tempo felt more like having a gym in my home, whereas the Mirror was similar to just doing a workout while watching it on a TV. I hadn't done any weightlifting stuff in months. Honestly, now I like don't even care if gyms open back up because I have this. Tempo is actually doing $100 off if you use the code Shelby. So if you do want to get it, be sure to use that code for $100 off. Wow, what a testimonial, right? She doesn't even care if the gyms open back up again because she's just gonna keep using her tempo. And of course, you can't have a true call to action without Shelby providing a $100 discount for anyone who's interested in buying it. So how can you apply Shelby's sponsorship execution to your own brand deal strategy? There are three key takeaways. Number one, you always wanna value your viewer's time and ensure them that you're not here to waste it no matter what brand you're promoting. Also, be personable and speak to your audience like you would your friends, right? If it sounds scripted or like an automated message from a bot, your viewers are gonna lose trust in you. Number two, level the playing field, right? You must be crystal clear about a brand's value, not only for yourself, but for your viewers as well. Shelby's Skillshare plug was great because she communicated how the product helped her improve her own skills, but also explained how it can help her viewers with learning new skills that they may have an interest in. Number three, don't be afraid to tackle a brand head on. Shelby knew that in order to give an authentic review of the Tempo Studio, she had to do more than a 30 second spot way more, and it paid off. By comparing the pros and cons of competitors, you're not only giving it the most thorough breakdown possible, but you're building trust with your audience. By allowing them to see you interact with the product, they know that you're being fully transparent. And don't be shy about bringing in a second opinion to add further legitimacy to the sponsorship. Let me know in the comments, which creator's brand deal strategy should I deconstruct next? Hit subscribe and the notification bell so you'll know when my next sponsorship reaction video comes out. And by the way, do you want brand deal intel? Well, sign up for my email list with the link below.